Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade gu did not do very much last night g chef a little bit gj a little bit broke the zone finally gcad pushing up all right gr push it up a little bit gn all right, pushing down, now pushing back up. Gold, pushing back down. See what happens if we get at that zone. Let's pull up. Uh... All right. We still have got another 15 minutes until the New York session opens, but we've got uh, here's the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and US 30. Oh, let's see here. Go to five minute here. Showing a downtrend right now on US 30 on the five minute. NASDAQ showing the same. S&P 500 showing the same. All right. Let's look at some other New York session pairs. It's all new to me, guys. I don't get on New York session very often. If I do, I only trade two pairs, so there's going to be a little different. Uh, let's go look at... Uh, I may have to add them. Let's see here. What are those USD pairs at? USD JPY, USD Chef. Let me get those added. All right. USD Chef. USD JPY. Already had a nice little drop. For those who may have been in there since London session. Nice little drop since London. Gold just broke through the zone. Very interesting. Put that there. We'll see if price respects that level of resistance right there or that 
Uh, yeah, a little support, I'm, I'm sorry. So we'll see what happens right here. All right, not seeing too much movement right now. We got about 12 minutes into the start of New York session. Let's go down to the five minute chart on go. Gold is falling regardless of what is gold doing. Give me one second, guys. Let me make sure everybody in the group is, is all set up. Somebody's in that gold cell. All right, let me stop sharing here. See what here. Somebody's up 42 pips. Valentina, congrats. Congrats. Nobody Q&A, got 55 people on the call. Welcome, welcome, welcome to New York session. Jackie couldn't be here because she is moving. Uh, and so I am taking over for the day to help fill in uh, so that she can move and you guys can still get value on the call so we're gonna try to make things happen gonna make things happen today let's see what we can do all right let's jump back on the charts so tom took uh three trades in london session all hit tp in half an hour congrats tom congrats what strategy did you use what strategy did you use But well, gold is just still trying to fall. Look at that. Look at gold. I'm not going to chase it. Here's why you don't chase it. When New York session opens, now the session for gold happens. All right. This could be a, pre, a potential pre New York session fake out. Just like London session, I mean, uh, Asia session is a fake out for London. The two hours before London are fake outs, potential fake out setups for New York. All right, so you gotta keep that in mind as well. While you might be able to make and catch some pips, you also could be stuck in a trade. So you see, you know, look at that. It dropped and pulled right back. Gold is known as the account killer. So I'm definitely gonna sit back and we'll see what happens on this one. Definitely gonna see what happens on this one here. go we are in a uptrend on gold so Look at gold go.
take a look at that there. Bag on the five minute chart. Congrats. Oh, that's what it okay. Keep the bag on the five minute chart. That five minute chart hits. And make sure everybody in the group is in on the call. People not learning to read, all right. Reading is fundamental, guys. You read, hey, all your dreams will come true. All your dreams will come true. All right, looks like you got people getting in now. All right. Got five minutes until the start of New York session. Five minutes. Jump on here and take a look at it. Gold fell the whole way through all 50 pips. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see, we got any more New York session pairs? NZD USD. Keep on that one. It's like NDC's trying to make a move up to start the, the two minutes to London session. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's break it down. Let's go take a look at our news and see if we got any news coming out. Because news definitely does happen. Congrats, gold sale for 49 pips. Congrats, congrats. Let's see here. Let's go take a look at the news. Got to pull up. Uh, I use my FX book app as well. So right here on Forks Factory, we've got some Euro news. Uh, right now it's 9.29, so we're USD has some jokes, job openings. We got some red folder, Great Britain Pound news here in about 30 minutes. And then some FOMO, oh, FOMC news in 30 minutes. And for the rest of the day, FOMC guys is, can be pretty brutal. So USD, we've got jokes news yet yeah, on my FX book app. It's actually red folder news. So we'll be looking on the lookout for that here in about 30 minutes. Some more orange folder news in an hour. The same Great Britain Pound news. All right, so we'll just be on the lookout. Nothing too crazy. A little bit here and there. Nothing too crazy. We'll keep our eye on it. New York session has officially started as of now. Let's jump back and see what's going on. US 30. Try to dip and turn around at the very beginning. Is it a fake out? We'll find out. NAS 100 had a little fake out. Well, that was US 500. That was S&P 500. USA, they all did the same thing. A little fake out at the beginning. Looks like they, they want to head to the upper room. Let's see what happens on. Gold trying to pull back a little bit. Respecting that zone. Let's see what happens on that one. If this was with the trend, I definitely would be taking this trade right now. Somebody tell me what they see. I see that fractal low with a bullish engulfing candle. Fractal low, bullish engulfing, which means we should be entering into a buy right now. But it's against the trend and the very beginning of New York session. So I'm not going to enter it in. But if we were in an uptrend, I would be all over that. I would be all over that if we were in an uptrend. But we're currently in a downtrend. But I'd be all over that if we were in an uptrend. All over that. Got the same thing here on the NASDAQ 100. Not quite on the US 30. We'll see what plays out. What's gold doing? Gold, respecting that zone right there. What's it going to do? What's it going to do? Like it was a snow, a snow, slow night last night, man. Nothing's really moving. Euro pair is not moving. I 
a little movement here, year of JPY. Anybody looking at anything good? Anybody looking at anything good? Like his energy is going to go back down. And go ahead and back up. As soon as this one closes, I expect there to be a fracture low right here. The overall trend is up on gold. Give me a second and see what you guys are talking about. Anybody got any questions here? Let's see, Q and A, got two questions here. Is your purple EMA a 200? Yes, it is a 200. All right, it is a 200 based on strategy number nine. Go watch the strategy number nine video. You'll understand why it is there. SPX 500 fractal. Yep, we were just looking at that. Just looking at that. That's against the trend, though, what we just talked about. Caught nice pips on UK 100 last night. All right, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I have issues with the VPS. Might look into that. Okay. Look at that strategy number three and four on EG. Let's go take a look. EG. Euro GBP. All right, we are in a what? We are in a downtrend. We definitely don't use strategy number three on Euro because strategy number three is a Great Britain pound strategy only. All right, strategy number four though, yes. If we get a break below the money zone, there's your entry, but the zone is in the way. So we need to see a break below the zone as well. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go look at the G pairs. They're not trying to break. They're all like, they're trying to break down. Not a lot of movement going on. GJ broke its zone. Now it's is moving, it's booming. This is very interesting. US 30 heading the opposite way of NASDAQ. All right. Real interesting. US 30 and it's moving by itself. Uh, US 100 trying to boom, trying to moon. Typically, from what I've been taught by the gurus that trade indices, the NASDAQ 100 is always the first to move and then everything else follows. I think I'm gonna follow, play the, I'm gonna follow, uh, follow the leader. I think I'm gonna play follow the leader on this one here. Straight 
great at. This is really interesting though. I can't say I've seen this before. You got the US 500 doesn't know what it wants to do. The NASDAQ 100 is pushing up and the US 30 is pushing down. Yeah, I can't say I've ever seen this before guys. I can't say I've ever seen this before, it's just interesting. I picked a heck of a day to come back to New York session, man. man. Super issue with VPS last night. All right, I will talk with the tech team to find out uh, it, what issues there might have been. Gas shortage affecting the market. Uh, it could be. EU, come on, Brenda. Well, I guess you guys don't know I'm not an EU fan. We are in New York session, so I will, we'll go ahead and pull up EU. We'll go pull up, there it goes. There it goes. EU currently in the uptrend. We'll watch out on that one. US 30 coming back up. Nah, still booming. US 500 moving, all right, US 500 moving. Told you that fractal what, that fractal load, even when it's against the trend, it's up 60 pips and climbing. Price action is strong, even against the trend, guys. Look at that, even against the trend. So what you guys will see a little bit of when the fractal strategy comes out, and that typically you're looking for price to be an uptrend. So we, you know, we want there to be more green zones than red zones. 
But when you have a fractal low like this, and the next candle is a bullish engulfing, so it engulfs, that means this body eats this body, then you enter in for buy the next candle. Now, this setup here is on the 15 minute time frame. So you can see here, as you enter into that buy, you would have had 86 pip drawdown, but you'd be up right now about 68 pips. So it's a good setup. We got one minute. I'm thinking about entering to the trade. US 100 is booming, US 30 coming back up. US 100 with the buy on the M5. All right, guys, I'm in your buy. I'm going to take 50 pips off this S&P 500 trade, I believe. Let's see here. Let me map this out. Let me just double check here. What we got going on? Got to close above the arrow moving average. All right. Got the price action going. Go moving up as well. We hold off on that just a second here. Let me check one last thing. Got that fractal low on gold, I was talking about. Good sign. Let's see here. Come on, S&P, you gonna make your move or not? We're gonna wait this one out before we potentially look at the inner end. Like it might want to, I guess US 19 is 100, push them back up. What are we doing here? What are we doing here?
Nine minutes until news. We got USD news in nine minutes. Go respecting that zone, bouncing off of it. I'm waiting on, uh, it's in the uptrend, so I'm waiting on the bag entry. I'm waiting on the arrow for gold. I'm waiting on the up arrow definitely for gold for bag entry, US 500. There it go, pushing, there it go, pushing. Falling back up. I am not gonna take the buy, guys. I was going to, but I'm not. We got news in nine minutes. USD news, red folder. My rule, do not enter into any trades 30 minutes before news. That's why I held off on this trade. 30 minutes before news, you don't wanna enter into any trades. This blue line, though, I believe is where it's going to go, though. This blue line is where I believe this is the next level of resistance, uh, minor resistance. But I'm not going to enter in because I'm going to wait for news to happen. We got seven minutes. Red photo news. Jolt's job openings. Never heard of this. I don't know what Jolt's job is. Jolt's. Job openings is a survey done by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics to help measure job oh, vacancies. It collects data for employers, including retailers, manufacturers, and different offices each month. Hmm. We'll see how that goes. And then in 37 minutes, so 30 minutes after this, we've got uh, orange folder USD news, feds, the federal, you got Two people from the Fed speaking, and then you get Great Britain Pound with uh, Red Photo News. So we will wait until news hits. US 100 is back up. I don't know what US 30 is doing. Man, that US 500 trade looks beautiful right now. Easy 50 pips. Easy, I want to take that trade. Must stay disciplined, even if you miss out on trades. News could come out and nothing could happen. But hey, you got to stay disciplined because you could easily get into a trade. News does come out. And it sends price the other way 500 pips in a matter of five minutes. And you're sitting there wondering why your account is at zero. So be disciplined, even if you miss out on trades. All right. Even if you miss out on trades, you know. It's going to happen. But I tell you, if you stay disciplined to your rules, you will see that you have a payout in the end. Stay in discipline. Stay in discipline.
Mm, mm, mm. I know some of y'all in this trade too. I know some of y'all in this trade. I know y'all. Y'all like to get in trades. But look who it is. Jackie decided to drop in. Why do you not like EU? Just curious. A right. couple reasons. Number one, uh, it's not a very volatile pair. So, you know, I can't get pips out of it. I'm looking to get pips. Not a couple pips, but I need at least 20. Uh, number two, it's too erratic. Doesn't make any sense to me. So it's not a pair I trade very often. So if it's not a pair I trade very often, I don't feel comfortable trading it. So I'd stick away from it. Uh, plus, every trade we've taken on London session with EU, we've lost. So I don't take it on anymore. That fractal on, on gold was not a, it didn't have a bullish engulfing uh, pattern after it. So we have a fractal, but we don't have a GJ on the wedge. We've got a fractal, but we don't have a uh, bullish engulfing after it. All right. Remember what I showed you guys with the S&P 500 on the 15 minute? Remember? Fractal low. The very next candle is a bullish engulfing candle. All right. That's the price action I look for. All right. That's the price action I look for. Now, on gold, you know, I told you guys fractal low is going to come, but look, fractal low, that's not a bullish engulfing. What is that? It's not, it's not the right candle. So it's, for me, it's not there. So I don't, I don't see that there. All right. So now I just wait for the up arrow to give me the bag entry because we are in an uptrend. Taking every fractal doesn't mean anything because fractals are made to be broken too. What you don't see is that when fractals get broken, they disappear. So these fractals do repaint, all right? And if you took that S&P 500 trade, which I know some of you guys did, you should have already hit 50 pips already. That's what I wanted to get in, but I don't, you know, stay disciplined. Don't get in before the news. So we just stay disciplined. But if you got in, because I know some of y'all did, y'all caught the 50 pips. That was easy 50 pips too. GJ for the wedge. Um, <clears throat> not really sure what, what wedge you drew, but I mean, if you drew this wedge right here, something like that, it definitely already passed as far as the entry. So I don't know if you drew this pass wedge or not, but I wouldn't be taking it just because it's an uptrend. So, you know, you want to take, you know, wedge trades with the trend, unless you're a lot more experienced with wedges and then you take it against the trend. Could have had this set up here. I'm not really sure what your setup looked like, but the setups I see are all against the trend. No Q and A. Yeah, there go Dante. What up, man? TP here for S and P. I knew somebody was in that trade, man. You guys, boy. <laughs> oh, look who it is. Snuck in there. I didn't see the name. Ashley. Ashley in here. Hey, congrats. Yeah, I, I see your team catching pips daily. I see the team catching pips daily. going on yeah Dwayne I had to jump on here uh Jackie had some she's moving so it didn't have internet which is fine so maybe we'll jump on here and see what we can do see we can't make some things shape yeah and you're watching your first live session what's going on what's going on welcome 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 let's take a look US 500 through the roof we got one minute to news go trying to fly U.S. 100 pushing. U.S. 30 finally getting with the program. Finally getting with the program. I don't know what's been going on with U.S. 30. So this is the five minute. It's now 9 a.m. 
since we're standard. This is the high of the start of New York session. And this is the low. Let's see if US thought they're gonna break out this box. If he's still in US 500, hey, up, up, and it's up, and it's up over 100 pips. All right, let's see what happens. So what I've done here is a similar strategy to um, the Asia breakout. Um, I boxed in the beginning of New York session and the, and the, the, the top and the bottom. Uh, we'll see if US 30 breaks out of this box here that it's stuck in this zone right here. Uh, with this news. We'll see what happens here. Right now, I'm not expecting it to. As you can see here, you got a one, two, three triple top. All right. So you got triple tops, and then you got lower lows, all lower lows. I'm expecting for price to come down here and break this fractal low here and head down. That's what I expect. Because uh, it's not acting right. And it's going against everything that's going on with, their, with the other indexes. They're up. You have 30 playing games. But if it breaks to the upside, potential, potential up, up, upside here to the zone. All right, potential upside to the zone, back to the 200 moving average. When in doubt, price comes back to the 200 moving average. When in doubt, it's just a matter of when. But we'll see what happens here. Right now, it's looking very interesting. I've never seen it before, guys. It doesn't make any sense to me. US 500 or yeah, S&P 500 finally got with the program, but it was undecisive for a while. NASDAQ was pushing up and the US 30 was pushing down. I've never seen that. So uh, whenever you see stuff that you don't understand, might be a time to stay away from the market. Might be a good time to stay away. Might be a good time. Let me get rid of this blue zone here. Like another green zone popped up. It's funny how that green zone popped up, right? I had that blue zone pop up, I had drawn, and then the green zone popped up in the exact place. Once you can really start to see the market and understand uh, where the market has levels of support and resistance or supply and demand zones, if you have learned how to identify both, then you can literally draw certain areas that will pop back up, you know, and then an arrow will tell you if it's true or not. As you see here, I drew that before this green zone even popped up in the exact area. And guess what happened? A green zone popped up. Green zone popped up. Waiting on the bag entry now on gold. Waiting on that on gold. USDCHF, JPY not doing much. It's an interesting day, very slow. A very slow day. A very interesting day right now. Market moving interesting. <laughs> News is out. Not much happened. You know, hey, we missed out on pips with uh, because of the news, but hey, it's, it's all right. We missed out on pips on because of the news, but we could have easily got into the trade with news coming and blowing accounts and lost 100 pips or whatever the case may be. So, again, not about 50 50. It's about ensuring that we are. Uh, staying consistent with our trading plan. This is my trading plan. I don't trade around news. All right. US 500 with the buy. That's S&P. All right. 
US 30 still close below that zone. I don't know what's going on with US 30. And that's a, uh, this candlestick formation right here is, uh, uh, this is what they call it, evening star. I'm expecting price to head down now. I'm expecting it to head down. I don't know what's up with US 30 today. That's why I stay away from US 30. I like to trade S&P 500. I feel pretty good about that move. It went where I thought it was going to go. I like S&P 500. I've watched it long enough. US 30, man, it'd be on that, it's on that crack cocaine. See what I mean? I'm expecting it. I'm expecting the sell. So from a price action standpoint, guys, I am going to look to take this sell on S and I mean on this US 30. Based on price action. Based on price action. And the price action here is this candlestick formation and it being a triple top. All right, that's what I'm looking at right there. I just got an anonymous tip about someone just told me gold has a bag entry on H1. I don't know if I like that. That's the opposite direction. Overall trend is up. I'm not messing with that. All right. I thought it was a bag entry the other way. That was a bag entry the other way. All right. US 30. Come on, baby. Give us our pips. If you're getting into this trade, make sure you're using proper risk management. Indexes are very volatile. They're more volatile than uh, they're more volatile than um, forex pairs. So you know they're going to move a little more erratic as far as more pips. All right, and your lot size is going to be you know definitely more important. The more pips you know a pair moves, the you know, the stronger the uh, the move is. The, you know the the more pips you can gain, lose, the more money you can make or lose. All right, so be careful with that. We've already hit 100 pips, so if you closed out, congrats. Take profit where you feel comfortable. I've got my TP set here based on uh, this level of support right here. Uh, can't give you the exact level, but I can tell you it's somewhere around the 34, 440 level. All right, the 34, 440 level. All right, price action at its finest, guys. Price action at its finest. I am now going to lock in my profits. I am now in a free trade. It just briefly hit up over 200 pips. I'm just gonna let this one play out. It's a free trade for me now. 223, 243, 259. Gotta love it guys, price action. When you learn price action, you can't go wrong. 273, two, don't play with me. Go on, hit them TP, let me lock in some more profit. Let's lock in some more profit. We're gonna lock in more profit, wait for it. Don't do me like that. Hit my TP. 300 pips. There it is. We done. And we out of there like that. 303. I'm done for the day, guys. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm gonna go 300 pips. Jackie! Dante close half position. Jackie, 400 pips. 300, 300 pips. Hey, if you caught some pips on that US 30 drop, and I hate trading US 30. Hey, go ahead and blow up the chat. I am not, that's what I'm talking about, guys. It's price action, a little bit of price action. Have a little fun. Uh, the candlestick Bible, and I have somebody, I don't know what happened. It's not pinned to the group anymore, so I'm going to have to repin it to the group. Go through the candlestick Bible. Start to truly understand your uh, candlestick formations. When you start to add candlestick formations to the strategy that we have, and I'm going to start taking more price action trades, you'll start to see that you are more and more comfortable 
taking trades, all right? Again, the overall trend, and again, I'll show you guys here, the overall trend with US 30 on the minute five here is a downtrend, right? We're in a downtrend. That's the overall trend, all right? I marked the high of the beginning of New York session for a reason. It's a new session. So sessions uh, are like levels of support and resistance, believe it or not, all right? Sessions are like levels of support and resistance <clears throat> uh, for many reasons. You know, I'm not gonna go into details, but that's uh, where the market makers as well as the uh, institutional investors love to set their positions, all right? Uh, at the start of new sessions. That's what they like to make fake outs. Uh, US 100 and US and S&P 500 and NASDAQ were moving up. So you might've been enticed to be in a buy if you're a person that likes to trade like I do with correlation, all right? But when I marked that high, I saw the triple top, I saw the lower lows. And when this third hit happened here, this triple top, when it made an official triple top, I saw that this quick little uptrend right here ended at this level of resistance right here that I marked before it happened. You had a um, evening star, which is my favorite candlestick pattern. So it's a, a upside down hammer, all right? At the top of a uptrend. That right there is, um, from a price action standpoint, they call it an evening star. It's called an evening star for the standpoint of, in the evening, you know, what, you know, sun goes down. Therefore, in the evening, uh, evening star should signify price going down. I know some of you guys still in this trade, congrats to you. Some of y'all probably up 500 pips, but that is how uh, I see the market from that standpoint. I like to take um, price action trades off of levels of support and resistance. So when you learn about levels of price of support and resistance, just like I showed you guys with gold, when I drew that there, and I'll explain why I drew it here, it's all because of this price action right here. These prices right here stayed and went sideways. So literally the top and the bottom of ranging price, and also the bottom corresponds with the top of this area, of this ranging area right here, that signifies or shows another level of support. That's why this green zone popped up right where I had the blue zone, which was right around this area right here. So as you guys start to see and, and be on these charts a lot more, uh, you'll start to understand a lot more of that. I just like to take price action trades off of levels of support resistance. So shout out to everybody that jumped in the trade. Jackie, 700 plus pips up. I knew somebody was still in that trade. M1 arrow just dropped for US 30. Ashley, market merger still in the trade. I should've known you guys still in the trade. Congrats, congrats. All right, gold still pushing up. I didn't like the setup on gold. Uh, it's the reason why I didn't take it. I'm getting people telling me AU has a bag entry. Let's go look at AU real quick. Dante, 850 pips bag. <clears throat> Beautiful. Beautiful. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, AU. Let's go look at AU real quick. AUD, USD. Where you at? There you are. We got a bag entry on AUD, USD. AUD USD is definitely in the uptrend. And yes, it just had a, a bag entry on AUD USD. You wanna know why it's going the other way? That zone right there, it's a minor level of support and resistance. So arrow pops up all the major levels of support and resistance. Uh, there was a formula I had in the very beginning to help show minor levels, but too many levels of support and resistance, you'll never get into a trade. Uh, but these minor levels here are the reason why sometimes price go the opposite direction of what you would think they do. You know, uh, 
price never goes directly the way you want it to go. Uh, trust me, I wish it always did. I wish every bag entry went straight to TP. Just, you know, if it did, you know, we wouldn't have to trade any other strategy. However, uh, that's not how trading works. So as you start to understand levels of support and resistance, uh, both minor and major, Arrow will show you the major ones, uh, then you will uh, start to truly understand and see um, what the market is doing when it's doing it, all right? But this is why I believe price turned around there. Uh, let me see here. We also got some more news coming. Let me take a look real quick. So come on, my Facebook. Uh, I go to that zone popped up on US 30. It's funny, didn't I draw that line right there to show the bottom of the low of New York and all of a sudden the line popped up there? It's kind of funny, that's the second time it's happened. And if US, we talked about it, if US 30 breaks below that, we could see it just disappear. We could see US 30 continue to drop if it closes below. I actually might have to get back in that trade. So we've got uh, 13 minutes. We've got uh, red photo news on Great Britain pound pairs. And we also have uh, orange photo news on the USD. Uh, so Fed speech for USD and the Bank of uh, England's uh, Governor Bailey is speaking uh, in 13 minutes for Great Britain pound. So. Hopefully this GP news gets these G pairs moving. I need some movement. Market dead. Man, go. Hmm. Definitely respecting that zone. Got news coming. We'll wait it up. Jackie says she's done for the month. 900 pips bad on US 30. Congrats, Jackie. Nice. Dante said he just took silver bag entry off the M5. Let's go take a look at it. Brenda, possible head and shoulders on what, Brenda? I'm not really sure. Did you say something earlier? Brenda, head and shoulders on what there? All right. 
And let's go take a look at silver, 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 silver. Let's go look at silver. I gotta go add it. View symbols. Gotta go add the silver. Silver goes with gold. Let's see here. Metals. X A G U S D. There it is. Let's go add. Let's go add silver. On the I think he said if you said in the five minute. Uh, there we go. Clear up trend. Got the bag entry. I'm not a I'm not. I don't trade silver very often. Actually, probably never. For me, the zone is a little close. But uh, if you take the trade, you probably you, you know best. I'm not a silver trader. I know that. Wonder if our CFO was on the call, he, he definitely could let us know because he's trading silver all the time. That's his speciality. But you see that correlation though, look at that. Gold and silver being manipulated together. Don't worry about that. That's another, that's another topic for another day, guys. Another topic for another day on that manipulation. Anybody here collect uh, silver and gold? Anybody have? like silver and gold coins or bars. I used to have a lot of silver. I got rid of it, but I'm thinking about getting back into collecting my silver again. All right, got the Fed news, market pulling back. We'll see what happens here. Maybe we jump in and catch some more pips. All right, see the rest of you guys talking about. Anybody got any questions in Q and A? Nothing in the Q and A. Hey, G E R thirty hundred pips, man. Don't be doing that, Chris, man. At G E R thirty. <laughs> yeah, man, you got like GER30, man. I like it. 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 But guys, I'm not going to be able to be around here the full day. I'll be gone here in about 30 minutes at 10, probably about 945. I got, I've got a, a meeting at 10 a.m. Uh, so here in about 37 minutes. I'm glad we were able to catch some pips. Let's go take a look at some stocks. Hey, look, let's go look at some stocks. See if we can't find some setups for the day. I don't know what the US 30 is trying to do. US 30 is still trying to break down. The news already passed. Let's go take a look. The news. Oh, we got six minutes to the news. Hmm. Let's go pull up a few stocks and see if we can't get some setups with some stocks. I uh, got tested it. Let me add some. Let's add a few more. So I'll give you guys a trick. Typically, whatever direction the index of the stock you're trading is going in. That is most likely the direction that stock is heading in as well. The index is a combination of uh, the price movement of these stocks. So if uh, the NASDAQ, which we're on right now, is trending up for the day or for the session, most likely these stocks are doing the same thing up and then they're, they're stalling out. So let's go take a look at it. Uh, let's see here. I know Amazon is in the NASDAQ. Hold on, we just got a new candle. Hold on real quick. That's the five minute. What are we looking like? 
Yeah, we got big movement down. Still got five minutes for the news. There go US 30. Man, good night. You still in that trade? Congrats. Congrats. All right. Uh, let's go look at Amazon. All right. And you can see Amazon spiked up at the very beginning of the market session. It's just like NASDAQ did, and now it's trickling, trickling back down. Now it's trickling back down. Stocks are a little different. So you guys know all stocks, they always start at the period separator. All right. That's the, at the beginning of the session or the other uh, New York session for them. All right. Uh, this is red because of the, the coding that I have. But if you see here, when you don't have arrow on it, you can see that it was a green candle there. This tells you that at the beginning of New York session, when the stock market opened and Amazon started being traded for the day, it shot up and now it's trickling back down. Why? Because the NASDAQ shot up at the beginning of the New York session. Now it's heading back down. And Amazon is one of the biggest contributors to the overall NASDAQ moving up or down. It's heavily weighted compared to a lot of the other uh, 100 uh, stocks that are part of the NASDAQ 100. All right. Look at that. You could have been into this bag entry since Friday. You got a bag entry at the end of the day. And Amazon has dropped. They dropped a total of $164. $164. If you trade stock options, you've been up 500% on that drop. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that right now. That's coming, that's coming, coming, coming to a uh, coming to an access pass near use later on. What are you talking about? I'm not even gonna talk about that. <laughs> Man, that's a beautiful drop, though. That's beautiful. Good lord, US 30. What I tell you though, if it breaks below that zone, it's gone. I told you when it breaks below that zone, it's gone. Hit below that zone, a little pullback, and it has dropped another 900 pips. Oh, now everything wants to move in line. Now everything wants to move in line. Might be looking for a US, or might be looking for S&P 500 sale here in a second when it breaks the low of that, of the session. So the new session started, when it breaks the low. When it breaks the zone, I might be looking to sell on the US, on the S&P 500. Get that line up there real quick. I might be looking to get into a sale if it break if it closes below that. Might have to get into a little bit of a sale. Still got news in two minutes, so I'm trying to be disciplined, but I'm seeing the setups. I'm seeing the setups. For those who hey, who, who took this sale? I called it out earlier. If it broke below, look for the sale. Who, who took the sale earlier? Somebody, let me see here. Who took the sale? Who took the sale? What broker? So the broker I'm using right now is my FTMO account. So that's why you see here, my broker is FTMO uh, that I'm utilizing. So uh, I've been on my FTMO journey. My journey is to collect a $400,000 uh, FTMO account by August. That way I can be trading on FTMO account. So that's what you guys see here. I'm trading FTMO, all right? Back in GER 30, stop loss and profit up 300 pips. Hey, congrats, Chris, man, congrats. Charmaine made a quick $140 on US 30 once it broke the zone. Hey, congrats, hip and dip. I'm glad somebody took that trade or that setup. All right, why did it respect that? It's, it's the session. That was the lowest point of the session. All right, US 500, 
for the sale. There it is. And we just got a US 500 for the sale. Where are you at, US 500? I am, uh, oh, it didn't break from me. I don't like that. It did not close below. It closed right at it for me. I, it's going to drop, but I'm not taking it. It didn't close below. I need it to close below. So if I, you know, this one right here closed below. Yeah, we'll look to take the sale. But this one right here did not close below. All right, now that I see that the setup is there, now I'm going to try and, come on, get off the screen. Now I'm going to try and look for a level of support of where I'll take the trade to. See it pulling back? See it pulling back? That's what I don't like. I don't like that. It's pulling back. All right. Pulling back. This candle did not close below, so we're waiting for a candle to close below. There's about 100 pips in between this. My level of support there. Yep, 100 pips. That 4120 level is a good level to take profit if you're in this trade already. I'd let us see a little pullback so we can get in and catch at least 50 pips. Pull back a little more so we can get in this trade in two minutes. Take a look at the news real quick here. Now it's 100 for the sale. What do I think about it? SPX 500 is at a key level. Yeah, I don't like the way it's moving. I don't like the way it's moving. Now it's 100. What do I think about the sale? So for me, I had the fibs drawn on there, but it went all the way back to the 100 for the retrace. I don't trade off the 100 level. Uh, and for me, I don't see anything that gives me the indication that I want to sell. So I'm probably not going to touch it. And there goes US 500.
I'm not going to touch it too close to the zone. I mean, TP, I believe, is at the 4120 level if you are already in it. If you're already in it, make sure you lock in the profits. But this, uh, I'm not, wait, I'm not liking the way it's moving. Another thing you guys start to understand as well is you'll start to see how the candles are moving and you'll start to understand when price, who said that? Uh, Dwayne, as he said, SPX 500 is at a key level. You'll start to understand that when price gets to certain key levels and what a key level means is a level of support or resistance. When it gets to certain levels, it'll just gonna stall out. So you wanna wait, you wanna wait for price to make a move at those levels. Any ETA on the Arrow Auto Trader? Uh, negative. So uh, I, have, I don't really talk to you guys much on New York session. So the Arrow Auto Trader uh, is currently on hold at the minute. Uh, I have, however, uh, the reason it's on hold is because I've been um, working on a different EA, which is a market maker EA. So strategy number nine, all right, uh, is what I've been working on. Uh, so making an EA, I told you guys that I'd have an EA for Arrow, and then I'd probably make, if you guys didn't hurt, I've talked about it before on London session, that I would probably make a market maker EA all by itself, but then Arrow would have an EA, which right now I'm, I'm still, you know, uh, working out the best way for strategy number one and strategy number three, just to be a lot more consistent. Uh, it's about the, the accuracy is is there, but it's not good enough for me. And I don't want to put out a product that's not uh, up to my standards. Uh, but the Aero EA, uh, so again, that's the Aero EA, so it's being put on it's on hold right now. It's still running. I'm still you know collecting data, but I'm just not um, I'm just not actively working on it. So collecting data, and then I'll come back at it later. Strategy number nine, I've taken that out, and what I'm working on is a market maker trend EA. So it looks at the, of course, the overall trend of the market, and then it identifies when price has hit a peak formation low, a peak formation high. All right. So what does that mean? It means that if we're in an uptrend, actually, I'll just show it to you here. We'll just go ahead and take a look at it. And we'll take a look at it real quick. Let me pull up a blank chart real quick. Share my screen with you guys. All right, share screen. All right, hold on, guys. This is uh, Mr. Our, our CTO himself, Mr. Bill Wynn. Give me one second, guys. Let me speak with him real quick. All right, guys, so we'll see you getting that New York session link fixed. Uh, that was uh, our CTO, so look out for that link to be fixed. Um, now to talk to you guys about the market maker cycle, all right? Let me find a pair. So if any of you guys have actually watched the strategy number nine video, this will make a lot more sense to you uh, than those who have not, all right? Actually, I know GN had a very good one last night.
So as you can see here in GBP NZD, you know, uh, right now there is no trend. Uh, let's go look at the H1. On the H1, we're in a downtrend, all right? So overall, we're in a downtrend because the, the EA trades off of the H1, all right? Just so you guys know, all right? So uh, real quick here, and I'm glad I'm seeing this. That means we're getting ready to set up for a, a nice sale on GN with the, with the EA here pretty soon. So what the EA does is it identifies when the peak formation lows or highs are found. So no matter if it's a downtrend or uptrend, all right, you can make money both ways as if you can truly understand the market maker cycle. All right, so you can see here, we're in a downtrend, right? All right we're in a downtrend. Now, um, market maker cycle is in two different ways. The uptrend market maker cycle, and then there's a downtrend market maker cycle. So the uptrend market maker cycle is W. This is typically what it looks like in the cycle. A W, a V, a V into an M and the M, the W is planted in the low end support and the M is planted in the resistance. See that W, V, V up to the M, all right? And then for a uh, market maker down cycle, you have M, A, A, W. with M being in support and W being in to, I'm sorry, M being planted into resistance and W to support, all right? So just opposites, all right? That's what they look like, uptrend, downtrend. Now, the push is typically over a three to five day cycle, all right? Typically over a three to five day cycle is when you have the full push. Sometimes you can have more Vs than just two, sometimes you can have more As than just two. So there's more, you know, it's never gonna look the exact same because if it did, that would, that would make it too easy for people to catch on to and make money at the market. They're gonna always hide it, all right? Now, let me show you on the chart where this happens. We just had a market maker cycle end, all right? If you look at it here, we just had a W. So somebody in the group last night caught uh, pips on GBP NZD sale because they understood that the market maker cycle was over. Here's the V. Another V. And it's funky. But you can see it here. You got your M. It was easier to see on the 15 minute time frame, at least for myself when I looked at the chart to see why he took that trade. All right. But you got a WVVM. Started on this day, day one, day two, and it ended on this day, day three. It's a three day push. All right. It's going to typically be a three day push and typically be at least three times the ADR. So we checked that. It's about this push up was about 300 pips which is pretty close to three times ADR, uh, pretty close. GBP NZD typically has an ADR of about 100 to 120 pips in that range. So that's pretty close to a three-day push and a three-day ADR, all right, as far as the overall ADR. So if the ADR, average ADR is 100 pips, three times the ADR is 300 pips. So whenever you have that, then guess what? The potential for price to reverse is going to be there. All right, the potential for price to reverse is going to be there. If you don't believe me, look right here. Here is a what? Here is a MAAW move right here. M. 
It's a big M too. And so as a beginner, when you're first taking these, what you want to do is you want to take the market maker cycle moves with the trend. So if the trend is down, then guess what? You want to look to take a MAAW setup. And these A's is right back to back. Boom, boom, boom. At the same levels. All right. And this MAA, like you had multiple A's, went right into another A right here into the W. Looks very weird. But again, when you can identify it, you can see it there. All right. Boom. And that's a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four day push into the W. So on the fifth day is when the W started to head up. So typically what you'll notice is that the overall trend is down. The market maker cycle will be stronger and potentially longer. So you may get a four or five day push, all right, on the market maker cycle in the direction of the trend. So you catch more pitch that way. And typically the market maker cycle, the opposite direction of the trend, it's typically just a small pullback setting up for the push, the next push down or up, depending on the overall trend. So what the EA does is it looks for, it looks at the overall trend and it's waiting for price to hit that peak formation high or peak formation low of the market maker cycle. Now, what do I mean by peak formation low or peak formation high? All right, so I'm meaning that it's looking for Oh, man. It's looking for this area right here. And it's looking for this area right here. These are the highs, peak formation high of the market maker cycle and the low. All right, the high and the low. And then once it reverses and it's confirmed to have been the low or confirmed to have been the high and it reverses, it hits my trigger, enters the sell. To give you an idea of what I mean, you can see here, this account here, I just started it on Monday. It's already up 9%. It's up 9%, all right? E G G J E J. It all caught. It caught. If it's a buy, it caught the peak formation low and it bought it. If it's a sale, that means it caught the peak formation high and it sold it. And so you can see here that it secured the bag on fifty pips on these two, and then on E J, it got taken out in profit. So it was up, but it got taken out in profit. So up nine percent, three trades, and it's only been running since Sunday on this account. So, so far, so good. I got a few tweaks to make to it. And then what I will be doing is looking to potentially, uh, you know, apply for the application to bring this product to AP to go through the beta test group. And if it goes through uh, successfully, then you guys will have access to potentially uh, utilize it. So that just kind of gives you an idea, uh, but also that should give you a, a little training on how strategy number nine works. So even if this EA doesn't make it, strategy number nine works. Uh, we use it all the time. Actually, uh, it's now my secret sauce uh, before I actually look to take trade. So, you know, the last week, I think we went 11 and 0, and we caught over 400 pips. It's all due to the fact that now the goal is I'm looking to identify the market maker cycle uh, before I look for any entries. That way I understand, I don't care what the trend is in. Uptrend, downtrend, I don't care. I just care what the market maker cycle trend is. All right. The market maker cycle trend is all that matters because the market makers move the market. All right. Uh, I'm going to answer this last question, guys, and then I got to go. Uh, someone asked, which strategy am I using for FTMO? I use every strategy, one through 10 and price action. So that price, price action trade I just, we just took on US 30, that was for uh, my FTMO account. I trade everything on FTMO. Uh, and then uh, somebody who asked, who's doing London session tonight? Me, I will be on London session tonight. Uh, I won't be on New York tomorrow because I'll be on a plane 
headed to California. We are having a mastermind uh, meeting in California to mastermind on um, bringing some things to you to help get the ball rolling uh, for you guys in multitude of ways. All right. So uh, hey, we, 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 we grabbed 300 plus pips. So, some, some people grabbed almost a thousand pips. Uh, congrats to you guys. Uh, but we, you know, everybody should have grabbed 300 pips on that US 30 sale. Uh, price action at its finest. I hope you learned something today about price action and about the market maker uh, strategy. Um, I'll see you guys tonight on London session for those of you guys get on. Uh, and if you're going to continue to trade, make sure to use proper risk management. And I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Mm -hmm.